Well, I think the leader of Plaid Cymru, in her winding up in her speech, got to the nub of the issue. Uh, the government may use its majority in the chamber of those who are present today to frustrate the desire for transparency which exists not just in this assembly but also outside it. Uh, it may win the vote here today but it certainly will not win the vote in the court of public opinion outside and if the reputation of the government means anything I should have thought you would have wished to at least look good to the outside world. But let's remind ourselves what this is all about. It's not just about bullying. I think to use the word bullying in this context uh, does a disservice to what we are debating here today. Let's listen to Leighton Andrews's own words, and they weren't just off-the-cuff um, comments, they were written by him in a blog, so he knew what he was doing. He said, there had been deliberate personal undermining of Carl Sargent from within the Welsh Labour government over several years. I'm not going to name names today, but let's hope he'll do so in due course. But I made a complaint to the First Minister about one aspect of this, of which I had direct evidence. In the autumn of 2014, an informal investigation was undertaken, and uh, I noticed that the uh, First Minister nodded in disagreement when Adam Price a moment ago uh, s asked whether there was a formal request for an, invitation, for an investigation. Leighton Andrews says, I then asked for it to be made formal. So Leighton Andrews has said there was a request for a formal investigation, and we certainly do need to tell which of the two accounts is correct. He went on to say, I was told it would be made formal. He was never shown the outcome. There was no due process, he said. And it's not just a former finance minister in the first minister's own government that said that. Of course, there was his former special advisor as well, uh, Steve Jones, who made similar comments, which I won't repeat because it would be otiose. The seven principles of public life attached to the ministerial code say that holders of public office are accountable to the public for their decisions and actions and must submit themselves to the scrutiny necessary to ensure this. And where better to scrutinise the actions or inactions of the First Minister than here in the elected National Assembly of Wales? To appoint someone from outside to examine the facts, uh, no one can disagree with. I'm not opposed to the independent in adjudicator or investigator at all. I don't see these two options as in any way contradictory. They're complementary. We should have both. But it's we who are elected in this place who have the right to ask the questions and to continue to ask the questions until we get the answers. We don't know whether the investigative process which the government has chosen uh, is going to be in public. We don't know whether the right questions will be asked. We should be the ones to determine that. We don't know what the terms of reference of this investigation are going to be. They should uh, uh, proceed in tandem. And uh, I believe that this National Assembly will be failing in its duty if it doesn't succeed in achieving what it is here to do, which is to scrutinize the actions of the government. Now, I appreciate there are political difficulties for Labour AMs. Uh, it's the First Minister who is uh, under scrutiny, uh, but not just the First Minister, because it goes much, much wider than that. It's the actions of special advisers, possibly other ministers, according to Leighton Andrews, at any rate. Uh, he go went on to say that the atmosphere on the fifth floor in 2011 to 16, a much longer period, uh, was toxic. Minor bullying, mind games, power games, favouritism, inconsistency of treatment to different ministers, deliberate personal undermining on occasion, and uh, he said also that Carl Sargent was unquestionably the target of some of this behaviour. Now, what has happened to Carl Sargent, of course, could not have been foreseen, uh, and I don't hold the First Minister uh, responsible for that. But the consequences of his inactions over the years may well have had that unforeseen outcome. And we owe it not, therefore, uh, only to uh, the public outside, but especially uh, to Carl Sargent and his family to have a full and open scrutiny of the facts behind this affair. And I notice the silence from the Labour benches today. They are not just members of the Labour Party, they are members of the National Assembly. 
And it's simply not good enough to be Carwin's terracotta army there, mute and immobile and silent in the face of what is clearly that has the possibility to be exposed as a major public scandal. And so I just asked the First Minister to look himself in the mirror and to come back with the answer to the question, does he really think that the public outside are going to be convinced that the kind of inquiry that he wants, self-appointed by someone who he has chosen, with a procedure that we don't get the chance to question, questions that need to be put, that we will be prevented from putting, whether that is likely to be regarded as a credible form of investigation, whether it's likely to get to the answers which everybody wants to elicit. I believe that there will be a resounding no to that in the outside world and that the First Minister would be doing a massive disservice to the public of, at large, to the whole people of Wales, by trying to force through this motion here today, this amendment to this motion today.